And now joining us is Juan Ramirez and Kathy Pritchett, who both are students here at Lehman, uh, reporters at the Bronx Journal. And they're joining us to question Mary Fetchett, who is the mother of Brad Fetchett, who lost his life in the World Trade Center. Juan, we'll start with you. Uh, you basically invited Mary here, and uh, the segment producer of this segment, mm -hmm. and I thank you for, you've done good work. You've, oh, uh, you've put this segment you. together. But uh, what questions do you have for, uh, for Mary? Well, my first question is, um, going back to the 9-11 Commission and um, their uh, recommendations, uh, has, has the government been making any of the changes due to uh, the recommendations suggested in the 9-11 Commission? Well, I think they, ha they have made changes and we are moving forward, um, but I think uh, writing the legislation is the first step. So what we're trying to do is follow through and make sure what was legislated is implemented. Um, I don't think that they have clear timetables, they don't have clear oversight. Um, you know, there's a lot of new uh, organizations that have resulted uh, because of the 9-11 Commission report. Uh, there is legislation that we're actually trying to advocate uh, right now as we speak. And we've been real hopeful since the new Congress that they've been committed to this. but. As you know, there's a lot of other issues that they're focused on right now. And so we're traveling to Washington to just remind them uh, that there should be a sense of urgency. Well, is, uh, there's a presidential campaign coming up. And would that be a, an issue that you folks are interested in making sure that it's debated during the, presi the next presidential campaign, uh, the outstanding recommendations of the 9-11 Commission? Well, I think everybody should be asking their elected officials, where do they stand on uh, you know, um, preserving our, our civil liberties. Uh, the Civil Liberties Board uh, currently, I think, is understaffed. Uh, they don't have subpoena power. Uh, if you have a complaint, you're supposed to send them an email. I mean, it's really not, uh, uh, it's not overseeing, um, you know, potential violations of civil liberties. Uh, we don't, first responders are still not able to communicate. We have to follow make sure the spectrum is uh, converted. Uh, we have to make sure Homeland Security monies is going to areas of risk. And um, we have to be very concerned, truthfully, about uh, the use of nuclear weapons. So I think our foreign policy and really uh, creating relationships with some of these countries uh, is going to be uh, critically important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kathy, do you have a question? Yes. Um, I want to know, would you consider yourself more involved in American policies than you were before 9-11? Well, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know nothing about politics. As I said, <laughs> when we went for the rally and I spoke, I thought we would speak and the commission would be created. Uh, you know, I thought it was a one-stop shopping. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't realize is that, um, you know, I probably am committed to this for the rest of my life. Yeah. Uh, as an organization, we're very focused on preparedness, and so um, although we're supporting all of the 9-11 recommendations, we feel that we should narrow the scope uh, now and focus on preparedness. So we've worked with the Department of Homeland Security and promoting September as Preparedness mm -hmm. Month, and I hope that every community uh, will be integrating that into their own plan. Okay. So what is your ultimate goals for the Voices of 9-11? Like, what do you ultimately want to do? Like, what do you want to express to the, to the world, to America? Um, well, I think we're working in three areas. We're certainly continuing to support the families. We run tele uh, families, survivors, and rescue workers. Uh, we run teleconference group support groups. Uh, we have a large event on September 10th and 11th in mm -hmm. New York City. Um, we've also worked with local communities in promoting um, building bridges. We had um, sent uh, cameras over to Afghanistan. We had a photo exchange exhibit uh, with two, between two schools and two women's schools in Afghanistan and uh, two in New Canaan, Connecticut. Um, and then we've just launched the 9-11 Living Memorial. And so we are collecting, it's to commemorate the lives and the stories of 9-11. And uh, so we're collecting photographs, text, audio, video uh, for the victims' family members. We're also meeting with corporations to find out their story because, 
you know, they had to rebuild their businesses, oh, relocate, they lost all of their records. What uh, about Ground Zero? Are you involved in the redevelopment of Ground Zero? I'm sure you want to have an input there too as well. Well, we have, but I think they're at a good state. They have, um, mm -hmm. you know, the World Trade Center Memorial Foundation has, um, is in place and they have a wonderful leader, Alice Greenwald, who uh, actually ran the Holocaust Museum. So our contribution to the World Trade Center Memorial is to build this digital archive. And so my message to everyone listening is, if you have anything related to 9-11, whether it's an article, a photograph, a video, mm -hmm. um, letters that you wrote, uh, letters mm -hmm. that you received, please save them. And we would welcome uh, to incorporate any of it into this digital library that we're creating. My, yeah, my Key question then okay. is, where do they send it? How do they get in touch with you? Well, they can go to our website, uh, which is voicesofsept11.org, uh, and if they want to enter the 9-11 Living Memorial site, uh, they can go to www.911livingmemorial.org. Uh, we're also documenting memorials that have been built around the world. Uh, so if you're familiar with, even if it's as small as a garden, uh, you can click into the state. We have a list of the memorials. Um, there must be hundreds. Oh, thousands, right. yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. We're actually partnering with the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, we have about 300 on our site now, and we have 300 family profiles. Uh, we have a lot of artwork, quilts that were created. Uh, you know, we feel it's really important to not just uh, tell the story about the people that perished, but tell the story about the people that survived mm -hmm. in the wonderful way that our world came together. Juan, you have one more question. We're um, almost out of time. In the film, Lee ILP, uh, one of the, um, he was a former firefighter when his son yes, died I know, in the September uh -huh. attacks. Um, at the end of the movie, it's very interesting, he speaks about um, complacency. And, um, Many people, many of us sit back and say, oh, well, you know, I'm just one person, I can't do nothing, you know, no matter what I do. But, but how much is, uh, is it of a difference for a bunch of people to get together and actually make a change? How important is that? Well, I think, first of all, uh, you can't withstand the energy it requires unless you feel passionate about something. So, again, you know, on the college-age students, you know, choose something that you feel passionate about. You know, I have, as a, as a result of my loss, uh, the many gifts that I've been given are the wonderful people I've met. I mean, mm -hmm. here I am today, you know, at your university speaking. And, um, you know, it's just so heartwarming to mm -hmm. see people that are interested, people that are willing to help, uh, people that have, share the same mm -hmm. passion that I have, you know, on any level. So it's really been uh, a wonderful pleasure to be here tonight, and I thank you, thank you for the invitation. Well, I thank you for being here. Uh, uh, any, we have like half a minute. Any more comments, uh, questions? I, I want to know, like, do you feel more fulfilled now that you're like helping so many people, or how did you feel before 9-11? Is this like better life for you now? Well, <laughs> I think I've always been you know, that type of uh -huh. person. Um, I, 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 I say it's because I'm an Irish mother. <laughs> you know, maybe that has something to do with it. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know. At the beginning, I was probably working 17-hour days, seven mm -hmm. days a week. And, you know, I've uh, tried to cut back on that, so I do have a family life mm -hmm. and my family has a home. Um, but, um, you know, I feel it's a life's work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, anytime you learn about something, you know, I've learned about intelligence failures, I've learned about how Congress works when they're in session, how you create a bill, mm -hmm. and the importance of making sure that these reforms are implemented. So on some level, I feel that I have an opportunity mm -hmm. because I, I do have a story, and I do put a face on to um, the realities of a victim's family member. And I think they lose sight of that sometimes inside the Beltway. Mary, we've been, it's been a real pleasure and honor having you here. Mm -hmm. And I said this to you the last time you came to Lehman College. We're all very sure that Brad would be very, very proud of you. Yeah. So thank you for being with us on the program. And if there's anything else we can do in the future uh, to communicate the message that you're trying to convey, we're here for you. 
Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be right back with the Reporters Roundtable to discuss 9-11.